Hi, fourth and fifth graders, welcome back. Um, it's good to see you and be here with you again today. We are going to continue reading Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, today and finally find out what happened. Before we get started, let's make sure you have the materials that you need. You will need, if you have a packet, you'll need that. If you don't have a packet, that's fine. You can just use paper. You'll need a pencil or a pen. And then, of course, you'll need your turn and talk partner. Anyone can be your turn and talk partner. So make sure you have a brother or a sister or a cat or that you have uh, called Russell and he's on the line and you're ready to talk to him about your reading. Whatever, whoever you choose to have as your turn and talk partner is fine. Today we're going to finish reading Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, and we're going to find out what happens in the story. What do you remember in the story so far? Turn to your partner. What I remember, so we met Mr. Hatch, and Mr. Hatch had really changed. He was happy and friendly and outgoing and making friends. But then the mailman came back and told him that he had delivered that heart to the wrong address, that it wasn't really meant for Mr. Hatch. And that's where we left off. So we're reading to find out what happens next. Today, as I'm reading, I'm going to stop three times, mm, no, I'm gonna stop two times today and give you a chance to ask questions. We ask questions to help us better understand our text to make sense of what we are reading when we're reading fiction. So go ahead and make sure you have your questions from the last two um, sessions available and that you have a new stop and ask questions paper, either the one from the packet if you have it or you can just create one on your own paper like I've done. The postman took a deep breath. I'm afraid I delivered it to the wrong address. It was supposed to go to another house. Mr. Hatch recalled tearing off the brown paper. It had never occurred to him to look at the address. He fetched the heart-shaped box and the pink bow and gave them to the postman. In this situation, fetched means he went and got it. He fetched the heart-shaped box and the pink bow and gave them to the postman. I do hope your supervisor won't be too angry with you now. The postman was headed down the sidewalk when Mr. Hatch called for, from his porch. Mr. Goober, I forgot something. He gave the postman the little white card. Alone in his living room, Mr. Hatch sighed. Nobody loved me after all. Then he read the paper, took his shower, and went to bed early. The next morning at 6.30 sharp, Mr. Hatch left his brick house and walked eight blocks to the shoelace factory. At lunch, he sat in the corner by himself, ate his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drank a cup of coffee. What question can you ask about the story right now? Stop and jot.
So Mr. Hatch has gone back to his old routine and that makes me wonder, how is he feeling right now? So that's what I wrote down at my first stop and jot. At lunchtime, he sat in the corner by himself, ate his cheese and mustard sandwich and drank a cup of coffee. After work, he stopped at the newsstand for his paper, but he did not speak to Mr. Smith. And when he ordered his turkey wing from Mr. Todd, he did not smile. Nor did he pat little Melanie Todd on the head or bake brownies or have picnics or parties or play his old harmonica anymore. Everyone whispered, what is wrong with Mr. Hatch? Mr. Goober, the postman, told them. We love Mr. Hatch, insisted Mr. and Mrs. Dunwoody. He gave us flowers for our garden. He helped us mend our back fence. Mend means to help fix. He helped us mend our back fence. Mrs. Weed nodded. I love him too. He saved his bones for my dog, Ruffy. Ruffy barked. She loved Mr. Hatch too. Mr. Smith told everyone how Mr. Hatch had watched his newsstand so he could visit the doctor. And Mr. Todd told everyone how Mr. Hatch had found his little girl. All the children in the neighborhood remembered Mr. Hatch's wonderful brownies and lemonade, and most of all, his laughter. Poor Mr. Hatch, they said. What can we do? What can you ask about the story right now? Stop and jot. So the neighbors all love Mr. Hatch, but Mr. Hatch doesn't know it. So I'm wondering what will they do to show him how much they care about him? So my question that I'm going to write down is, how will the neighbors show Mr. Hatch that they love him? Poor Mr. Hatch, they said, what can we do? Then Mr. Goober announced, I have an idea. On Saturday morning, Mr. Hatch woke to a bright and sunny day. He put on his old overalls and went out to the porch with his dustpan and broom. He couldn't believe his eyes. All over the porch were red and white hearts and pink bows. There were boxes of candy on the chairs and yellow streamers flowing from the ceiling. And sticking up out of his mailbox was a shining silver harmonica. The front yard was filled with people, happy, smiling people. They were holding up a huge sign with hand-painted letters. It said, everybody loves Mr. Hatch.
Mr. Hatch dabbed at a tear with his handkerchief. I do believe he sniffed. Somebody loves me after all. And then he smiled. And then he laughed. And then he hurried down to be with his friends. What a sweet ending. I'd like you to review your questions from our past three days. So look over all the questions you've asked and put a check mark next to any question that you think was answered in the reading. Remember, sometimes questions, the answer is given directly in the text. But sometimes the answer is not given directly in the text, but you can answer it using clues from the text. Take a look at my questions. I asked, how is Mr. Hatch feeling? And I asked, how will the neighbors show Mr. Hatch that they love him? The first question, how is Mr. Hatch feeling? The author never came out and told me exactly how Mr. Hatch was feeling, but they gave me clues in the writing and in the illustrations. So as I was reading, he went back to his routine. He wasn't stopping and talking to his friends anymore. He wasn't helping people or having parties anymore. And if you look at the picture, You'll notice his head is kind of down. He's looking at the ground. And over on the other side, over here, again, his head is down. He looks very melancholy. The word that I would use to describe the way he's feeling here, even though the author didn't tell me, is melancholy. Melancholy means really sad. He's feeling melancholy because he feels like no one loves him. So that question was answered with clues from the text. My other question was about what the people, what his neighbors were going to do to make him happy or make him know that they loved him. And that was answered directly in the text. They threw him a party. Then they gave him another box of chocolates and they made a big banner that says, we love you, Mr. Hatch. And that was the way that they showed him. And in the end, he said that he felt loved. He said that someone really did love him and he smiled and he laughed with his friends. So sometimes questions are answered directly in the text, and sometimes you have to use clues from the text to find the answer. I'd like you to look over your questions now, the ones that you've put a check mark next to. Directly in the text. Which of your questions were answered directly in the text? Turn to your partner. Which of your questions were answered indirectly using clues from the text? What clues? Turn to your partner. Now let's talk about the story. 
using those story elements that we talked about. What was the problem or the conflict in this story? How was that problem solved? Turn to your partner. How did Mr. Hatch change throughout the story? Turn to your partner. Asking questions is a powerful strategy that strong readers use. By asking questions when you read, you're able to think deeply and understand the text that you're reading. Today for IDR, you're going to continue asking questions about the stories that you're reading on your own, and you're going to continue to read fiction stories today. Any genre of fiction will do. I am going to continue to read Matilda and stop and ask questions about Matilda. I've been reading and I've been learning a lot about her crazy parents and all the wacky things that they do about the different crooked things they do to make money. Um, I learned that they are trying to get Matilda to help them in their schemes. Remember yesterday I was wondering, or last time I was wondering, how they'll try to change Matilda and they try to get her involved in the nasty things that they do to other people and she really doesn't want to do that. So today I'm going to continue to read and today I'm wondering what is Matilda going to do because she doesn't want to be like them and she doesn't like them and she doesn't like what they're doing to other people. What is Matilda going to do to try to teach them a lesson? So that's what I am going to be reading today during IDR. I'd like you to be doing the same thing, to stop and ask questions. And then as you read, read to find the answers to your questions. Read to learn about your main character, about the setting, about the plot. Read to find out what kind of conflicts happen in your story and how they're solved. And read to find out how your character changes over time. Next week, there will be a new teacher sitting in this chair, a new fourth and fifth grade teacher from Seattle who is really excited to continue this work with you and to be reading with you and helping you grow your brains. It's been such an honor to do this with you, to help you continue to learn, and I'm so grateful that you chose to spend your time with me. Keep reading, keep asking questions. We're so proud of you. Bye-bye.